Hey everyone, welcome to News Round with me, Nina. It's finally Friday, but before we get to the weekend, stick with us for all of this. I'm at a school in Manchester who are raising money for Red Nose Day! Yeah! Say hello to this six foot tall new arrival. And it wouldn't be Friday without Strange. Keep watching. First up, it's Red Nose Day. People all over the country will be getting funny for money to raise cash for the charity Comic Relief. We know loads of you will be doing the same. And De Graft is at school in Manchester for us. Morning, De Graft. Morning, Nina. Yes, I'm at a school in Manchester where the Red Nose Day vibes are in full swing. As you can see, everyone is dressed majestically in red. Give us a wave, guys. Hey, good morning. Now, we've got loads going on in this school today, so I'm going to head over to these pupils who are going to tell us more. So, what have you got in store? Uh, we've got multiple things in store to raise uh, money for the Comic Relief Charity. Some of them include um, the chuckle chair, face painting and selling Red Nose Day themed biscuits. You've got loads going on, but I want to know, what is the thing you're most looking forward to? I'm, I'm looking most forward to... The thing that I'm looking most forward to is the biscuits, because all the money that we make from them goes straight to the Comic Relief Charity, and I think that's a good cause. Oh, amazing stuff. I mean, I want to know what you're also looking forward to today. The biscuits, because they were fun to make and they look nice, and because we're, re we're get making money for Comic Relief. I mean, these biscuits sound amazing. How are you actually going to do them? So just the other day, we put the first layer of icing on and then today we're doing the finishing touches and adding some googly eyes. Ah, uh, you know what, I'm hungry just thinking about them. However, there was a word that got mentioned that I want more clarification on, the chuckle chair. What on earth is that? So the chuckle chair is where a chosen or selected teacher sits down in a chair and comedians or other children try to make the teacher laugh. You know what, seeing as you mentioned that, we have actually got some comedians with us to give us a joke. Hit us with the first joke. Why do you call a boomerang that doesn't work? Hmm, what do you call a boomerang that doesn't work? A stick. A stick! A stick, Nina! It doesn't get any better than that. A stick. All right, cool. Let's hit joke number two. What do you call it when you can't sleep and all you do is eat food? Hmm, what do you call that? Insomnomnomnia. <laughs> Insomnomnomnia, Nina. All right, we've got one more joke, one more joke. What is the final joke? Oh, you know what? The jokes, we're, we're still, we're still practising all of our jokes, all right? So, Nina, I'm going to head over to you guys. See you later. Bye! <laughs> Thanks to Graf, some fantastic jokes there. Have a great day, guys. Well, over on the Newsrun website, you've been letting us know how you're celebrating. Sneaky so Squash Guy says it's non-uniform day at school where people can donate a pound if they can. Ruby has told us that in their school, there's going to be a joke competition run by the school council and their friends are judges. That sounds great. Uh, Goofy Diva says, I don't have a red nose, so I mostly colour my real nose red and sometimes put funny faces on. What a great idea. And Annabelle told us that they think Red Nose Day is the best fundraiser ever. I watch it every year with my family and donate money. Well, thank you so much for sending us those comments, guys. Next, St. Patrick's Day is this weekend, but how is it celebrated? We've got De Graft again to explain the history behind it. What actually is St. Patrick's Day? Well, I'm here to give you your need to knows. First, we travel back in time all the way to about 431 AD. Introducing St. Patrick himself. He's the patron saint of Ireland and introduced Christianity to the country. He's often seen in pictures holding a three-leaf plant called a shamrock. There's a myth that he drove snakes out of Ireland, but although it's true that there are no wild snakes in Ireland, it probably isn't thanks to St. Patrick, and it's more likely that the country didn't have any snakes in the first place. Now, fast forward a little, and there's a big day to celebrate. It started off as a religious feast, but is now a global festival celebrating all things Irish. I'm talking parades. There's dancing at events called Cayleys with Gaelic folk music. And chances are you'll see a lot of these guys, naughty bearded fairies called leprechauns, and ginormous firework displays. Oh, and the green. How could I forget the green? If you're familiar with St. Patrick's Day, then you'll know that green is a big part of the celebrations. Sometimes big monuments around the world go green for St. Paddy's Day too. 
the London Eye, the Empire State Building in New York, and the Sydney Opera House in Australia have all donned the green makeover. So, whatever you're doing to celebrate, whether big or small, have a happy St. Patrick's Day. Some adorable animal news next, and Chester Zoo have welcomed a new arrival. The giraffe calf already stands at six foot tall and weighs more than 70 kilograms. The baby is now just one of 2,500 Rothschild giraffes on the planet, as the subspecies are under threat because of habitat loss. Now, you can tell Rothschilds apart from other types of giraffe because they have no markings on their lower legs, and they're also taller than other giraffe species. Mum, Orla and Baby are doing well. How sweet. Next is your favourite part of the week and mine. Here's Strange. Starting Strange with this one from Australia. Imagine playing golf and about to take your shot when you see hundreds of kangaroos coming at you. No one is quite sure what caused the stampede, but I'm sure the golfers were hopping mad and I wonder if they lost any of their golf balls. Hmm. Staying in Australia, how do you fancy taking a dip dressed as a bird. Well, a load of people did exactly that in a festival called Birdman Flying Contest. You've got Batman, a giant eagle and a tram to name a few as they hurtle themselves over the Yarra River with some pretty inventive homemade flying devices, all in the name of charity. So don't be trying this at home. Lastly, welcome to this magical digital garden where visitors walk across a grassy floor of colour changing lights. This is all part of a new immersive artificial intelligence theme park under one roof and it's been named Wonderverse. There are 16 different worlds that will take you through dazzling neon cities, glowing gardens, melting neighbourhoods and robotic light shows. There's more surprising news over on the Newsround website, including the coin swallowing dog and this absolute whopper of a blueberry. Check it out. Speaking of surprises, take a look at this. A swarm of bees interrupted a tennis match with two of the world's top players. It was the quarterfinal at Indian Wells Tournament in California when bees buzzed around the cameras and the players. Carlos Alcaraz swung his racket in panic and was stung on the forehead before running off court. A beekeeper was called to remove the swarm and eventually Carlos won in straight sets. That's all we've got time for today. Have a fab day. Bye.